infringed. And the thing that that most people, most good, well-intentioned constitutionalists and lovers of liberty don't understand is the Second Amendment has nothing to do with self-defense in the narrow way. It has self-defense mm -hmm. in the in the wider Lockean way. That is to say, when the government becomes abusive of your rights, it is your duty and your obligation and your right to throw off that government. And at the end of the day, our founding fathers understood that the Second Amendment had nothing to do with protecting yourself from burglars. It had everything to do with protecting yourself from tyrants. And the United Nation, no one, no one is more tyrannical in its conception and in its operation than the United Nations. And they understand. They have learned the lesson of history. You know, a gun without a bullet is just a club. Yes. So go for, go for the ammunition. And I'll tell you the story of... Um, I was invited by the ambassadors of Mexico and Spain to speak at the convention where they finally, uh, where they were drafting the arms trade treaty back in March of, I think it was 2012. And I went to that and spoke there at their little meeting on behalf of the Second Amendment. And these guys understood very well and made no uncertain terms that the goal of this ultimately is disarmament but the way to get there the best way to get there is to focus on the ammunition and yes they 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 specifically something yes. that most people don't know and i've written about but to my uh, uh, you know dismay it hasn't gotten enough traction which is the fact that it is the ammunition and at this meeting of the mexican and sponsored by spain and mexico there at the un they mentioned specifically that they were working on in Germany, they were working on technology that was a, a tiny chip that would be implanted in every round, and that chip would be required by international law to be used by every manufacturer of uh, ammunition. And oh. that chip would cause the round of ammunition to self-destruct after it had been used one time. Mm -hmm. Meaning the the end to all reloading, of course. Yes, and and we're talking about reloading at the very beginning of the Obama administration. They've understood that this is that the ammunition is the key thing, as you pointed out. A, a gun without ammunition is just a club. At the very beginning of this, they started out by not allowing the U.S. military to recycle their brass. Remember, they pulled that back, and then there was a That's couple right. of senators who came back and fought against that. And then a couple of years later. We uncovered some evidence that showed that they were still at a New York fort, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but they were still recycling this brass in terms of crushing it and selling it to China as scrap, spending money to crush it, selling it to China as scrap metal for far less than they could sell it back into the American market, which is what the military has always done with their scrap brass. So they, they get rid of the brass. They start making lead illegal in California. Uh, they want to do that nationwide. They want to uh, outlaw lead ammunition. So they understand not only uh, it's, it's a full spectrum attack, not just this UN arms trade treaty, but they want to get even to the components of ammunition. And as you pointed out about the Second Amendment, it's about it, it references infringement because I think they always visualize that this is going to be a gradual process. And it has been a gradual process of infringement until now. Now they're getting very bold. With this UN Arms Trade Treaty, they're going for the whole enchilada. As I said, full spectrum, gun control, all components, all aspects of it. And, and people don't realize, you know, everyone says, well, uh, if the blue helmets come for my gun, they'll pry it from my gold, cold, dead fingers. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the blue helmets. It'll be your local law enforcement that has been co-opted by the federal government. Yes. I mean, yeah. we, we, we are seeing now that with the Department of Homeland Security and with the Department of Defense giving grants and the Homeland Security creating fusion centers, the local law enforcement is something that just doesn't exist anymore. They're all simply outposts of the larger federal military uh, law enforcement complex. It's becoming a thing where it won't be a blue head, a blue helmeted UN soldier. It'll be a uh, the local deputy sheriff, you know, who mm -hmm. has been armed to the teeth by Homeland Security and the Department of Defense. You know, they show up to serve bench warrants with a anti-personnel vehicle and so that'll an armored personnel vehicle and that's how they'll show up to serve the warrant to you the notice to you that you haven't complied with the law requiring registration of firearms it's if you want to know exactly how it'll go down just uh, read the history of the past 20 years or so of the united kingdom and australia and that'll yeah. tell you exactly how it'll go down you'll be it'll all be enforced by your local law enforcement acting on behalf of the uh the federal government and of course uh they may just 
kind of weighed us out. There was the uh, fellow who did the wargaming scenario, uh, used to teach, and still did teach at the military college uh, in South Carolina, essentially talking about a revolution of Tea Partiers there and how that was going to play out in a scenario. But one of the things that he controversially said was, I will pry that out of your cold, dead hands. Hopefully, when you've died from natural causes, we're just going to wait this out. We're going to just continually uh, infringe on this until there's nothing left, and then we're going to uh, come for the little cleanup operations that we need to do elsewhere. But one of the things I want to talk about in your article, you pointed out the irony of this happening on Christmas Eve. And you spent a lot of time talking about Christians' involvement and the understanding of where our rights come from, that they transcend government. They come directly from God. And, of course, at the Berlin Wall, when it fell down, it was the Christians who, in mass, went to the wall after having met for seven years and setting their churches up as a place where people could come and freely talk about politics openly and could come and pray for their country after seven years of that. They marched on the wall, almost like it was Jericho, except it wasn't seven days, it was seven years. It's a long process, it's a revival process. I want to talk to Joe Wolverton about the transcendent issues when we come back. Stay with us. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Your house is dark, vacant. You must be gone on vacation for a while. Thanks for all the jewelry. Don't be the next victim of a break-in. Go to faketv.com and discover a device that creates the illusion someone is inside watching TV and makes your home unappealing to would-be thieves. Don't these people ever leave? Starting at $24.95 and there's free shipping. Go to faketv.com or ask for it at your local hardware store. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. This December marks 20 years that I've been on the air. Kicking off on Cyber Monday and throughout the entire week, we're offering the biggest sales in the history of InfoWars.com, celebrating my 20 years on air. And we do it by bringing our listeners the very best high-quality products. Free shipping store-wide on pro-gun Made in America t-shirts. High-quality water filtration systems. But not just free shipping. 30% off Super Mill Vitality. 20% off all colloidal silver. Buy four, get one free. With your purchase of one bottle of DNA Force, you get two free bottles of Survival Shield Nason Iodine, absolutely free, a $60 value. We're also offering 50% off a year membership at PrisonPlanet.tv and upping the number of people that can use each membership to 20. 20 years on air and InfoWars is celebrating it with the biggest sale we've ever had. InfoWarsTour.com or 888-253-3139. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-852-1820. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station. But it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-852-1820. That's 1-800-852-1820. Call 1-800-852-1820. Riders on the storm Riders on the storm Into this house we're born Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in Austin. We have on the line with us Joe Wolverton from the NewAmerican.com talking about his article that the UN declares that they're going to put the arms trade treaty into effect on December 24th. 
Now, we've talked about the scope of this. We've talked about how clever the government has become in their gun control efforts, how they have focused on ammunition. And, of course, we talked about how they early on stopped brass recycling from the military because, of course, the military makes their own ammunition. They stopped that and uh, then restarted it after senators protested that. But then it appears we have information It looks like they may have uh, continually uh, st stopped that and, and are recycling that rather than putting it back into the market. But, of course, as Nico reminded me, you know, the whole thing with the DHS that Paul Joseph Watson broke here at InfoWars, the fact that they're buying billions of rounds of ammunition and the ammunition shortages that they caused out of that, that was coming out of the general market because, as I mentioned before, the military makes their own ammunition. So they have understood that it's about ammunition. They're working on infringing our basic rights, but now this is coming for the entire thing. This is full spectrum gun control, registration, ammunition, parts, uh, everything, denying the right of individuals to own weapons, and then also putting in an enforcement mechanism saying that they will enforce it with the UN, although they may have the local police working for them. I want to go back to Joe, and, and uh, Joe, one of the things that we didn't talk about in the last segment, of course, was the aspect of the transcendent right that we have, the fact that the Constitution just merely recognizes those. These are rights that we possess as human beings from our creator. Going back to the Declaration of Independence, that understanding of our rights. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important. I, I tell people all the time when I give speeches that there are books that if you want to be part of what's going to happen, if you want to be part of taking uh, this country back to the place it needs to be, the place it was destined to be, then you've got to read some of these books that the founders read that informed them and taught them from their the cradle that there we are endowed. They did not create this idea. Thomas Jefferson did not, out of the blue, decide that we were endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. He discovered this from very little. And it's funny to understand that from the time that the federal government took control of education, all of these people, all of their writings, people that I, most of your viewers probably haven't heard of, these people, uh, Emmerich de Vottel and Jean-Jacques Berlamacchi and Samuel Pufendorf and Algernon Sidney, these people that were all over the writings and journals of our founding fathers were completely scrubbed from the notion of history, mainly to keep the idea out of our minds that yeah. we are endowed by our creator with certain rights. And uh, among those is the right to protect our life. And Alexander Hamilton explained it very well in the Federalist Papers, uh, number 27 and 28, that are the purpose is to throw off tyranny. John Locke, he learned it from John Locke as well. And John Locke learned it from those other guys that... Well, they could even go. Becomes, they, could, they could even go, Joe, to the Bible, couldn't they? <laughs> and have a bit oh, of a yeah. revival to understand that we have to stand up for the defenseless, for those who are being oppressed. It was Jesus who overthrew right. the money changers. Uh, got angry about that. Why is there no angry anger for, on the part of Christians when we see oppression? When we see oppression coming from our own government, too often I see Christians give government a carte blanche to do whatever they want to because of a misunderstanding of Romans. And we've had uh, uh, pastors on to talk about this many times, but that's what I think it initially stems from is just a misunderstanding of the lines of authority and a lack of compassion for individuals. I think you're exactly right. I think Jesus in the Bible, uh, as I mentioned, the article in Luke chapter 22 commanded yes. his followers to purchase a sword. Uh, I think Paul and his writings uh, specifically said that it is our Christian duty to protect ourselves and protect our loved ones. And we're they a, understood we're out of time. Well I wish we means. could go further, but we're out of time. I know you can't continue it. Thank you so much for joining us. Joe Wolverton, NewAmerican.com. Stay with us. We'll be taking your calls right after the break. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must 
must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call.